We are at Burnt Cabin at Ten Killer Lake, and we are going to install a, uh, a an inductive loop in the roadway. This particular roadway does not have a center line, so it's important that we cut the loop so that it captures both inbound and outbound traffic. The loop doesn't need to be cut all the way to the shoulder. If any part of the vehicle crosses any part of the loop, it will be counted. Here we are marking the corners of the rectangle and setting its width. A width of three to four feet is typical. This road has many cracks, so we are trying to avoid them when possible. Although the chalk line is hard to see on the video, it's clear enough to guide the saw. For most loops, three windings is ideal. For large loops such as this, two times around is sufficient. For small loops such as like a three foot square, four times around is actually best. Okay, now that we have a rectangle marked, what we want to do is mark where we want to stop the corners. What you don't want to do is cut a rectangle first and then cut the corners because then you'll end up with a triangular piece of asphalt that'll pop out on you. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is draw a line in the sand about a foot short of each corner and stop cutting there. So this is the equipment we need. You need loop wire, uh, asphalt sealant, a meter, <laughs> uh, and an asphalt saw, and all the PPE you need to, uh, to use it. This is the wire we have uh, to work with here. Um, this particular loop wire has an outer jacket which provides extra protection. It probably isn't necessary in, uh, in an asphalt road. If this was being buried in a, um, in, uh, under a dirt or gravel road, you'd really need this kind of wire. But for asphalt, it's a little bit of overkill, but this is what we're going to use. Uh, so we have a, a saw blade that will cut this width. And, um, we're going to put three windings of, uh, of loop in this uh, cut. So this will be close to about an inch thickness of wire when we're done uh, putting it in. So we need to cut down probably two inches deep in this road. had some problems with our saw's water flow system. Water helps keep the dust from blowing around and it minimizes the rate of wear on the saw blade. However, asphalt is much easier to cut than concrete, so it really isn't necessary here. Remember that loop wire shouldn't turn at 90 degrees or it can eventually break. Uh, try to cut the corners at approximately 45 degrees and cut them one to two feet from the corners of the rectangle. Okay, we've completed our, our loop. Uh, what we'll do is we'll come from our meter box. We have a slice going that way. We'll come out, we'll take a right, go around the loop three times. On the third time, we'll cut through this diagonal back into the meter box and we'll be done. 
Uh, we're checking the depth as we go, uh, sliding along here to make sure that the saw cut is deep enough for three uh, passes of wire. Uh, this being a particularly thick wire, we need to be down uh, more than an inch, probably an inch and a half all the way around. So we're double checking to make sure we got that deep enough. When inserting the loop wire, be sure the corners are seated really well. Corners are often the first place a loop wire will begin to force its way upward towards the road surface. Here we are finding that the saw cut is not deep enough to seat the wire firmly. We're finding we have to recut a couple of the corners. We didn't quite go far enough out with the display to make it deep enough. Increasing the depth on each of those. Here we have finished inserting the loop wire and have run both leads back to the meter box. At this point, it is best to either twist the wire leads or insert them inside a piece of PVC pipe to prevent them from forming mini loops, which can cause spurious meter counts. Okay, we got our wire laid in here. Uh, we dried up most of the extra water. And the, uh, we buried the wire and all the way up to the hole in the back of the box so there won't be any uh, wire exposed. And now we're going to go seal the cracks. Uh, the sealant we have is really just an ordinary asphalt sealer. It's not the ideal thing. Probably an epoxy kind of uh, sealant would be better. Um, but uh, we were able to get this at the local hardware store and do this job in one day, so uh, it'll work fine. Uh, it might only last a few years before you have to reseal it, but uh, you know, once we get all the excess water out of it, uh, we can go ahead and, and seal it up. At this point, we are filling the slots with asphalt sealant. There are systems available that can enable you to apply the sealant more quickly we were able to obtain this equipment locally at low cost. Try to create a waterproof seal because loops most often fail when water gets inside and then freezes. Okay, so I ran the loop back in here. Uh, we crimped the wire onto the uh, pigtail for the loop detector and turned it on. Tested the batteries and now we're going to uh, do some testing with the vehicle to make sure that it clicks, and it does. So we have a good functioning loop detector here, 31. And loop, 32. Perfect, and we're done.